Mr. Michael Collins. If you don't know who he is, he was uh, the third guy on the Apollo missions. He stayed in the spacecraft orbiting the moon when the other two fellas uh, walked on the moon. Anyway, I found this interview on 60 Minutes Australia, and I will play it now. It's uh, pretty hilarious. I think you'll agree. Cheers. Michael, your view of Earth is obviously a very unique one from out in space. What did you think looking back at our little blue planet from up there? Well, the first thing you see when you look out the window is uh, it's tiny. That was a lie. The moon is nothing compared to our home planet. It was it. It was center stage. It was all there was out there as far as I was concerned. Just again, you lie. Tiny little thing. Uh, blue of the ocean, uh, white of the clouds, but there was an overlay, uh, a feeling that I'm really not able to explain properly, but it is that I got a sensation that I was looking at something that was very fragile. The fragility of the earth just sort of comes through somehow. I, I know, don't know exactly how to explain it. Uh, we treat this part of the, uh, the earth. So many things uh, can go wrong with our treatment, are going wrong with our treatment, that uh, it uh, somehow that view just uh, miniaturized and encapsulated all those problems into a, a feeling of fragility. The attention has turned to sending men back up to the moon, sending astronauts back to the moon. Do you think that's necessary? No. Um, I, I used to joke that uh, <clears throat> that NASA sent me to the wrong place and that um, NASA ought to be renamed the National Aeronautics and Mars Administration. I even wrote a book one time 20 years or 30 years ago about mission to Mars. Uh, so Mars has always been my, my destination, my, my favorite one. And, uh, <clears throat> and going back to the moon is, is, is certainly an interesting detour, but uh, I would prefer that we just set our sails, set our sights, set sail directly for Mars. And why are you so passionate about a mission to Mars? Well, I just think that uh, Mars is the closest thing to a sister planet that uh, we have. If you want to go to Mars, you discover a lot of uh, obstacles in your way. Uh, it takes about nine months to get from the Earth to Mars. Problem is, when you get there, then the planets, are, the two planets are in bad alignment and you have to maybe wait a year on the surface before they get in a good alignment so that you can come home with the fuel you have available. So you're talking about a two-year voyage instead of an eight-day short trip. It makes, uh, makes Apollo look sort of like child's play, the, the Mars profile does. Uh, How long do you think it is before we can get to Mars? Elon Musk, uh, uh, I believe, wants to get there by 2024. Uh, I, I think that's uh, way over, overly optimistic. Uh, I, I would say probably in the 2040, around 2040, I would say. Well, today you've told us a new story entirely. The question is, Frau Helm, were you lying then? Are you lying now? Or are you not, in fact, a chronic and habitual liar? <laughs> <laughs> and that mission is really essential in your view for the future of humankind? No. Why do you think it's necessary then? Why do we need to go there just well, to not, explore? Flying in space is not necessary, I don't think. It's something that we have in us, human beings innately have within us. We, uh, we go out at night and we look up into the sky, we see things that we don't know what they are about. Uh, to me, it's an intangible, but it's a part of being a human being. Is this feeling of it's it's part of it's there. It's there to see, to go, to see, to touch, to smell, to understand. <laughs>